talking about the slave trade in Africa and how long um, Africans in Ghana and Nigeria was practicing slavery way before the white man came. They told the white man about it and done business with him. Like I said before, people got mad when I bought that book from Ghana and I started talking about this, but listen. The company's men would let nothing stand in the way of their drive for profits. They already knew that slavery was widely practiced in West Africa. In most African nations, it was an alternative to a prison system. Those who committed crimes, convicts, could be sold into slavery. If you owed a debt, you could be sold into slavery. Sometimes through deceit, or you could be tricked into slavery. Slaves were also acquired as captives of Africa's wars. Europeans had long been part of an established system for bartering them. The first Europeans who came to Ghana were the Portuguese, and they arrived in 1471. And when they got here, they found that there was a brisk trade in slaves between Ghana and its West African neighbors. And for 100 years, Portugal remained on the coast of Ghana and took part in this coastal trade. Uh, going to Senegal, bringing goods from Senegal, from Nigeria to Ghana, and bringing slaves in exchange for gold. And this was a situation before the transatlantic slave trade was introduced. Did you hear that? Let's hear it again. The Royal Africa. And when they got here, they found that there was a brisk trade in slaves between Ghana and its West African neighbors. And for 100... There was already slave trading. White man got here, like I told you before, people got mad when I said this. I said, when the Portuguese got here, they seen Ghanaians was enslaving each other already. They said, hell, we need some of them for the new world. Let's do business. They got together and built them slave castles together. Some African chiefs and stuff and and Europeans and Portuguese. Portugal remained on the coast of Ghana and took part in this coastal trade, uh, going to Senegal, bringing goods from Senegal, from Nigeria to Ghana, and bringing slaves in exchange for gold. And this was a situation before the transatlantic slave trade was introduced. The Royal African Company had no interest in the coastal trade. They wanted slaves to ship across the Atlantic they found a ready supply in local prisoners of war. When you went to war and you defeated the people, you took captives home. So you decided what to do with the captives. How many slaves do we need for farming? How many do we need for the army? How many do we need for domestic work, etc., etc.? After they've gone through all those logistics, the excess goes through the Atlantic slave trade. The image we have today of the slave trade as mass kidnapped by Europeans couldn't be further from the truth. For both sides, this was just business. The African role in the transatlantic slave trade must not be swept under the carpet. The greed factor was there. Kingdoms made money. They rose as a result of the trade. Uh, big, powerful people, uh, rich families who were created as a result of the Africans who were active collaborators in the trade. The company found that African kings were just as greedy as England's own royal family. They were willing to supply exactly what the plantations needed. The slave owners in the West Indies, they preferred slaves from the Gold Coast because they said these were very hard working, hardy slaves. Local businesses sprang up to supply the transatlantic market. The European traders had no need to round up the slaves. The Europeans themselves did not go inland to the villages or to the town to capture uh, slaves. They remained at the forts and the castles. That's what they told me when I went to Ghana. When you go, you, you're too scared to go inland. Something like just go inland, deep away from the coast. It wasn't their area. They didn't. They were. They didn't know it. So. Guess who was going inland getting slaves? 
the Africans themselves. Not under duress. And it was the Africans, traders, African traders, who sold the slaves to the Europeans. Now, what happened was that there were middlemen who would meet the inland traders bringing the slaves. They would buy these slaves and then in turn resold them to the uh, European merchants in the castles. Rival European powers were building castles to... And trip thing is, eventually British um, colonized um, Ghana. And um, what was it, late 1800s? They, European nations and Britain abolished slavery. But the Africans in Ghana didn't want slavery abolished. They begged, not all of them, so you have pockets of people. So there were many chiefs in, in, in African tribes that did not want to abolish slavery. They wanted to keep it going because they were making money. Brit the Britain had to put a law down. No slavery. We're done. It's over. Africans wanted to keep going. Keep making money. This is just a real history a lot of people don't talk about. But I just wanted to share it because I read it all in a, in a book by the Ghanaian University um, professor. Their cargoes. Within a century, there would be a fort every three miles on what used to be called the Gold Coast. It came to be known as the Slave Coast. The Royal African Company appealed to its major shareholder, James II. He began. Well, that's about it. Just some raw. Real history. So you got bad people everywhere, evil people everywhere, you know, um, bad morality with all nations. Um, even when Berbers was enslaving millions of whites, then after, after they enslaved whites, they enslaved blacks. So a lot of times I've learned that slavery had nothing to do with race. Um, it was just people moving around the world and they would conquer anyone weaker than him. Whether it was black, white, um, other races, anybody who was weaker than them, anyone to help build up their their uh, cities and, and, and countries, it went down. I'm out.